to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest here in the Carpathian Basin. I hope everybody is having a good weekend so far. Staying healthy, staying strong. Hi, Jainil. Hi, Sammy. Nice to see our members. Hi, Sweet Voice, Shaikh, Zahab, Kano, and Fatime Kyber Momand. Nice to see many of our regular members in this class. Also, welcome. In this session, we are looking at task two writing, how to correctly finish your essay for those high band scores. We started this essay yesterday. We worked through the planning, talked about a good thesis, a good introduction. And today, we will focus on the body paragraphs and the conclusion. Hi, Rashika. Hi, Ashraf and Abhishek. Nice to see more members jumping in. This lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Please visit us there. Try our premium package. Uh, if you don't like it, hey, there's a two-day no questions asked refund policy. And for the general IELTS, check us out at G-I-E-L-T-S help.com. That's general IELTS help.com on both of those websites. We have loads and loads of great uh, materials for you. Uh, this is our general IELTS website here with the green background. Click that big red button to join. And our academic one has the same layout but with a blue background. And you can click that big red button to uh, join us there. Uh, yes, uh, Rafa, I will go over the introduction from yesterday. So no worries. If anybody has questions about the IELTS or our, que or our um, products, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. I will gladly answer that for you. Thanks, Kyber, for appreciating the pink shirt that I have on today. Um, okay, students, so again, right now, task two, finish. And tomorrow, speaking part two and speaking part three, practice and strategy with some new uh, questions. Now, I finished on this note yesterday, and I'm going to start on this note today. Um, the task two essay and the task one essay, uh, it's very important that you have good content. It means good information in these essays. Content is king, okay? Very wise man once said that to me and I've listened to him and it's definitely worked out for my benefit as well. That person, I have to admit, was my younger brother who said, Adrian, content is king. And it's true. All right. So this was the question that we looked at yesterday. IELTS writing task two. You should spend about 40 minutes on this task. Some people prefer to travel around town by car, while others prefer public transit such as bus, train, or subway. Discuss both these positions and give your opinion. Again, this question does not ask about advantages, disadvantages. It asks about the preferences. So preferring public transit or private transport. So we talked about this. We developed... Um, our thesis based on thinking critically about the topic, the controlling idea, and eventually we got to writing the introductory paragraph. Now, the introductory paragraph, uh, of course, has three elements, as I expressed yesterday in detail. Um, it has a hook, it has the background, it has the thesis, and um, the hook, of course, has the topic in it, transportation preferences. And here we go. So just one more time, here is the introductory paragraph, and then we'll get right into those body paragraphs. So every person has their own favorite type of transport. Simple, elegant, to the point, works well. Okay, that's all it is. Every person has their own favorite type of transport. Sure. Whether it is trains, buses, the metro, or private vehicles, each and every person has a primary means of commuting around the city for their daily needs. 
individual choice of transportation has a significant impact on a person's life as well as the functioning of society. Although certain people prefer to use private vehicles to commute for greater comfort and flexibility, many others, including myself, opt to use mass transit as it is not only cheaper, but also more convenient. Fantastic. So this last sentence is my thesis. I'm not telling my reader what I will write about, but I'm simply writing about it. So I'm telling my reader very directly what I will write about instead of saying what I will write about. So here I'm telling my reader that, look, you can expect that in the first body paragraph, I'm going to write about private vehicles specifically for comfort and flexibility. So I'm going to explain how private vehicles are preferred by people for greater comfort and flexibility. So that's going to be my body paragraph one. And I'm also telling my reader that in my second body paragraph, I'm going to explain why certain people, including myself, choose, opt means to choose, to use mass transit or public transit for the reasons that it's cheaper and convenient. So I'm going to explain all of that in my second body paragraph. Okay, everybody's clear so far on what I mean by thesis and how the thesis shows my reader the structure and the content of this essay. Okay, so the thesis here shows the structure and the content of my essay. Okay. Everybody's clear on that, yeah? And that's, of course, how a lot of the reading passages work in the IELTS, by the way. So in the reading passages, pay really close attention to that thesis statement. Shivani and Kyber say, yeah, that's clear, okay? And uh, this organization is not by accident. So uh, because I'm supporting uh, my preference as public transit, I'm leaving my reader with that idea because it's the one that I prefer. So I always want to leave my reader with the idea that I prefer, that I choose, not with the opposite. Makes more sense logically, okay? Samuel says, yeah, absolutely, that makes sense. Okay, Lydia's on par, good. We're all on the same page then, let's get to it. So let's get into this body paragraph one, okay? So body paragraph one, uh, I have to open that with a topic sentence. Okay, topic sentence. Now, what I'm teaching you here, students, it's not one kind of approach to IELTS, but it is the standard way to write an English persuasive essay. This is what you will learn in college, first year uh, English, if you haven't learned it in high school. Um, you will learn how to structure and write an essay according to these rules. That's where I learned it, okay, and then mastered it during university. Okay, so now we get into body one. Okay, and again, body one starts with a topic sentence. Now, the topic sentence is really a definitive paraphrase of uh, thesis point one. Okay. So uh, I can give you an example of definitive paraphrasing. So it means paraphrasing by defining. Okay. So uh, I can say apple. Okay. This is just an example. Obviously it's not my topic sentence. And it depends on your level of knowledge and vocabulary, of course. So an apple for definitive paraphrasing would be, it is a red and round fruit, which comes from a deciduous type of tree and is found in temperate climate regions. Its taste is sweet 
with a hint of sour. Okay, so I'm just showing you some extensive uh, definitive paraphrasing here. Uh, this is an example of definitive paraphrasing. So apple, it is a red and round fruit which comes from a deciduous type of tree and is found in temperate climate regions. Uh, its taste is sweet with a hint of sour. Okay, so I'm explaining what is an apple with definitive paraphrasing. Okay, so that's what you want to do always for your topic sentence. So here you want to look at private vehicles greater comfort flexibility and define that using more words and clear information okay uh deciduous uh weenie is a family of trees uh, that loses its leaves during the winter months okay the other family is what's called coniferous coniferous do not lose their leaves during the winter months so trees that shed their leaves and grow new leaves each year, it's called a deciduous tree, okay? All right, uh, so I have some uh, topic sentences coming up, which is great. Uh, Nagame An says, many people have a tendency to drive their own car or bike as it brings more uh, private space and flexibility. Nagame, don't jump to bikes, although that might be true. Let's not go for bikes. Bikes and motorbikes are a minority in many places. Let's just stick with cars and automobiles in this case, okay? Um, and what do you mean, okay, so you have private space. What do you mean uh, by flexibility, okay, in the game? So people can come and go as they please, where they want, when they want, right? Un? So a little bit more definitive paraphrasing on flexible, Okay, uh, Lydia says, with the development of science and technology, private vehicles have become an important component in our daily lives gradually. Uh, Lydia, too general, okay? We know that, that's understood. It's too general for this. You have to be a little bit more specific. So um, when I'm talking about apples, right, Lydia? Uh, I don't start talking about all kinds of fruits, that apples belong to, but I specifically talk about the apple fruit and the tree that it comes from and the regions where we can find it. So I'm being specific to the apple. So be specific to the key point in your thesis. Okay, you'll do better. All right, Beck John says, the application of personal vehicles such as cars for daily commute can be spacious and available whenever the user wants to use it. Okay, whenever the user wants to commute. Uh, Beck John, that's very good. So everybody take a notice of Beck John's uh, definitive paraphrasing. So the application of personal vehicles such as cars for daily commutes provide a spacious and private environment and can be used whenever a, the operator wants, right? Beck John, okay, good. All right, so that's good. That's the kind of... Uh, paraphrasing we're going for. Okay, so I'm going to write something similar to that and then we'll go on to the next step. So, um, so uh, private cars provide the operators with added privacy and space as well as use whenever and wherever the driver desires to go. Okay. All right, so um, yeah, so I'm defining comfort and flexibility. So private cars provide the operators with added privacy and space as well as use whenever and wherever the driver desires to go, okay? So that would be a definitive paraphrase of personal vehicles are liked by people because of comfort and uh, because of flexibility. Okay, 
so that's fine. Now we want to explain that. Okay. So explain. Uh, give details. Provide reasoning. And uh, think of quantitative information. Okay. Now, you can do a comparison to public transport here, but focus mostly on uh, private transport here. So focus mostly on private vehicles. And to do this, visualize. So this is what many of your teachers and materials call supporting point one. Okay. I like to be a little bit more specific here and call it a clear explanation of the uh, topic sentence. Okay. So that's what I like to call it. So give me an explanation here. So what do you mean it's spacious? Uh, what do you mean there's privacy? Uh, what do you mean that I can go wherever I want, whenever I want? So maybe make a comparison here to public transport and clearly explain this to me using words and grammar that you're comfortable with. Okay. So Lydia says, a person who owns a motor vehicle can plan their destination and time. This proves that the owner can utilize and save time as he travels. Okay, Lydia, you want to uh, explain that. As well as having a private car provides safety and comfort to the owner, which cannot be achieved in public transport. Arguably, this has led to significantly less strain and further entertainment. Uh, Lydia you have a lot of ideas within that or within those two sentences. You need to reduce the number of ideas, okay, and explain it clearer, all right? I can kind of guess what you mean, Lydia, but you don't want the reader guessing, okay? You want to have clear explanation. Think about your reader as an alien. They come from another planet. They're really smart, but they don't know what you know. So stick to a couple of points and give clear explanation. I'm not sure where safety is coming from. In my mind, cars, personal vehicles can be much more dangerous, especially if they're in an accident. I would feel a lot safer on a bus or a train, to be honest with you. So you have to just stick to a couple of points and give a clear explanation. Remember, content is king. And within that, you have to give a lot of detail. Okay. All right. Um, Alex Joseph says, furthermore, the use of private vehicles benefits not only by saving time and greater convenience for the preference. On the other hand, people must wait for the exact time for public transport. Alex, you're on the right track. Um, you're close. But again, I have to fill in the blanks. So one of the big differences between personal vehicles and public transport is a personal vehicle is available near the operator. The operator does not have to go to a station where public transport stops, like a bus station or a train station. So you have to explain that clearly, right? That's the flexibility. So I'll give you an example sentence here in a moment. Um, Un says it's obvious that having your own car, or it's obvious that uh, having one's own car with spacious seats and air conditioners will bring commuters satisfaction, which cannot be attained uh, in public transport. Yeah, okay, on that's good. So you're describing the comfort of personal vehicles versus public transport. Yeah, that's how you want to do it. Absolutely. Good. Vishal says, personal transport gives the user the convenience to decide um, the time uh, to start their departure and to reach a specified location. Yeah, Vishal, absolutely, you're on the right track, okay? That's what you want to do, all right? So um, here we go. Many people choose personal vehicles because... They provide comfortable seats. Uh, 
seats and air conditioning. in their own space which cannot be achieved with mass transit. Furthermore, furthermore, am I typing today? Uh, furthermore, um, drivers can decide their exact departure time and arrival destination as where this is predetermined with public transit and commuters must go to designated stations such as a bus or train station. Okay, so there is my explanation. Again, just visualize, right? So when you're thinking about your car, you visualize that it's in my garage or parked out on the street. I go, I jump in, I decide when I do that, and then I drive straight to the mall parkade or uh, the parking lot, and then I get out, and I go in. If I want to make the same trip from my house to the mall, but I want to use the bus, I have to check the schedule, go outside, go to the station, wait for the bus, get on the bus, get off the station that's closest to the mall, and then I'm there, okay? So that's what you want to do, okay? So that's the comparison here, all right? So that's my explanation, and now comes the example, okay? Now here, um, you want to give a clear example, and because the essay is first person, you can use a first person voice. So you can use I, me, my. That's right, Samuel, so it's the example, okay? All right, so let me read my uh, explanation one more time. Think about your example. Again, I will try to catch different viewers at different times for this, okay? So many people choose personal vehicles because they provide comfortable seats and air conditioning in their own space, which cannot be achieved with mass transit. Furthermore, uh, drivers can decide their exact departure time and arrival destination, as where this is predetermined with public transit and commuters must go to designated stations, such as a bus or train station. And then I could even say at specified times, right? to be even more exact. All right, so now uh, give me an example, okay? So Beck John says, for example, when I borrow my friend's BMW for work, I can listen to my favorite Justin Bieber albums while sitting in a comfortable seat with air conditioning at a temperature of 10 degrees where outside it's 40 plus. Beautiful, Beck John. Let me borrow that for you. Uh, for instance, when I drive my dad's Mercedes to work, I am spoiled by the comfy leather seats and the cool air conditioning while the outside temperature is a boiling 40 degrees plus. All right, very visual, very powerful. That's how you uh, convince your examiner and your reader that you are a wonderful author that can communicate and convey information well. Very good, okay? All right, uh, Rafa, Rafa, Rafa Mahmo says, private automobile provides significant comfort as well as privacy for users. For instance, 
We are not limited to time and place wherever and whenever we want to go uh, to a destination. Rafa, that would be okay for your topic sentence and your explanation. It's not your example, okay? Example has to be uh, an idea, a situation, an event that the reader can empathize with and actually visually see, so clearly see. Even if I'm not writing, like some, I know some students are really, they're like, I, my teacher just told me don't write first person I, don't write first person I. Um, then, you know, if you don't feel comfortable using first person I, fine, write it third person, it's not the end of the world. Um, then say, for instance, when a driver sits in their uh, Mercedes and is spoiled by their comfy leather seats, so you can change this to a third person voice easily, okay? But again, from experience and from talking with examiners and our British Council IELTS representatives, they said, yeah, no, it's if the question is asking for your opinion, it's okay to use I. There's no rule there that you cannot use it, okay? The voice of the essay just has to be clear. All right. So Lorenzo uh, Garbarino says, in many cases, public transports are not clean, while your car is certainly cleaner. Well, I don't know. Sometimes my car is pretty dirty. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but Lorenzo, don't talk directly to your reader. You don't know your reader. You don't know the condition of your reader's car. Some people have horribly messy cars, um, and uh, you should never directly address your reader. So students, do, do not use the second uh, second person voice, which is the you, your, where you talk directly to your reader. Don't write directly to your reader. So don't use you, Lorenzo, in your writing, okay? It's a big no-no in good writing for the IELTS or for this type of essay. Uh, Fatime Korchi says, presently I don't have a driver's license, so I can't drive my own car, but personal vehicles always provide the driver a super comfortable place and is always readily available. Uh, Fatime, um, here, uh, you don't want to write about whether or not you have a car or a driver's license. This paragraph is focusing on people who prefer to drive a car. It's not focusing on whether you have a car or not. This is not a discussive essay. That would be a narrative essay, okay? So careful with that, all right? Content is King. Content has to be good. Um, Roshni says, uh, take India, for instance. Not take in India, Roshni, but take India, for instance. Take in Indian, it's awkward. Take India, for instance. Most of the railways are one hour behind their schedule, and individuals also lose their monthly wages. But having uh, one's own car can reach... Uh, destination on time instead of wasting that one hour. Okay, Roshni, kind of close, All right? Uh, Lydia says, my family used to commute short distances between home and work by motor vehicle as well as arriving punctually for various occasions such as my uh, sister's graduation ceremony. Uh, meantime, the atmosphere was filled with joy. Okay, Lydia, good start. At the end, you're going off topic. All right, um, so here is my body paragraph one, which is uh, directly expressive of my thesis point one. Uh, private cars provide the operators with added privacy and space as well as use whenever and wherever the driver desires to go. Many people choose personal vehicles because they provide comfortable seats and air conditioning in their own space which cannot be achieved with mass transit. Furthermore, drivers can decide their exact departure time and arrival destination as where this is predetermined with public transit and commuters must go to des designated stations such as a bus or train station at, a specif at specified times. For instance, comma, when I drive my dad's Mercedes to work, I'm spoiled by the comfy leather seats and the cool, cool air conditioning while the outside temperature is a boiling uh, 40 degrees plus. Okay, uh, so this would be uh, almost done. Now I need a connecting, uh, concluding 
sentence. Okay, so here my connecting and concluding sentence again has to respect the thesis. The thesis is the foundation of your essay. Okay, it's just like the concrete foundation for your house or your building. It's what your essay is built on. So remember that in my thesis, I said many others, including myself, opt to use mass transit as it is not only cheaper, but also more convenient. Okay, so I want to use that idea in the connection here. Okay, I want to use that. All right. So here we go. Uh, connecting. Nevertheless, for daily purposes, I and many others prefer public transit. Okay. So that's my connecting or concluding sentence here. Okay. So nevertheless, for daily purposes, I and many others prefer public transit. Okay. That closes this paragraph and lets me open up body paragraph two. So body two, let me shift that into the next page. Uh, same idea, topic sentence, and we need definitive uh, paraphrasing for thesis point two, which in this case, public transit is cheaper and more convenient. Okay, so what you need to do now is you need to define this and give some more details. Okay, so Pea Basak says public transport are financially more convenient for everyday commute as well as faster compared to personal car in certain circumstances or during rush hour, right, Paya? So you can allude to what you're going to explain. So a little bit more definitive, okay, students? So make sure that you're not just repeating your thesis point, but you really are adding a bit more value for your reader, giving another perspective, okay? All right. Amanjat Kaur says, looking at mass transit, it is cost effective. It not only provides an opportunity to meet new people, but is an alternative if your own vehicle is not working. Amanjat, mm, you're adding information that's not in your thesis. Remember what I said yesterday, students, that you can write a 200-page book on public transit versus private vehicles but we're not doing that. So you have to focus and stick to the points. Okay. So meeting new people, it's going off topic. We didn't mention, um, the availability to socialize on mass transit. That would be another reason. Some people prefer mass transit is they like to socialize, but then we have to mention that in your introduction, Amanjot, that public transport provides opportunities to save money, and to socialize, okay? But we didn't say that, so we can't suddenly surprise our reader with this information. We can't say, oh yeah, and you can make friends. It's like, whoa, what? <laughs> what are we talking about now? What friends on what, who, what, where, when, why, what, what's going on? Okay, if I'm an alien, I'm really confused right now, even though I'm clever. Suddenly we just went from cheaper convenient to making friends. So don't do that, okay? All right. Um, Eliana says on the, uh, light of the last ideas, it is more convenient to drive a private car, keeping in mind current circumstances. Um, Eliana, maybe that's your concluding sentence. I'm not sure where you're going with that. Okay. Uh, Cabot says public transport on the other hand is not only cheaper as it is financed, um, by society, um, but it is also safer because the operator is professional. Okay, Kavid, we didn't talk about safer, so we said um, it's cheaper and more convenient, okay? Uh, safer 
again, is a new concept. If you want to discuss that, you have to introduce that in your thesis. Okay, Kevin, you can't just suddenly throw in safer, all right? Because it's not in the thesis. If it's in the thesis, it can be in the body paragraph. If it's not in the thesis, it cannot be in the body paragraph. That's very important, okay? In university, your professor would say, where is this idea introduced? Or this is out of context, and they'll draw a circle around it, okay? All right, uh, Abhishek says, on the other hand, public transport such as bus, metro, and subway are not only cheaper, but also uh, more convenient during rush hour. Okay, Abhishek, that's on the right track. So... Um, using mass transit, especially for daily commutes, is uh, only a fraction of the cost of operating a private vehicle. And in many cases, it is much less stressful. Okay, so uh, descriptive paraphrasing. So here's what I'm writing for my topic sentence. Uh, using mass transit, especially for daily commutes, is only a fraction of the cost of operating a private vehicle. And in many cases, it is much less stressful. Okay, so less stressful is arguably the same as convenient. Uh, what type of paraphrasing am I using here? For those members that have been a part of these lessons for a long time, uh, what kind of paraphrasing am I using with this type of paraphrasing? Okay. What do we call that type of paraphrasing? Anybody tell me? Okay, this is again uh, in our strategies and lessons on our websites, the five different ways to paraphrase. It's one of the five different ways. And I know some of you have access to our premium packages. So um, you should be looking at those key strategies and learning the five ways to paraphrase, okay? Bex Ruth says it's a synonym. It's not quite a synonym. Um, I'll give you another example of it. It's like saying stay equals don't go. Okay. So in math, this would be as negative one times negative one equals one. Right? So it's called antonym plus negative. A couple of you got it almost. Okay. So, Pea, you're close. It's antonym plus negative. Okay, it's called antonym plus negative paraphrasing. Okay. All right. Again, it's to create more clarity for your reader, right? So, it's antonym plus negative paraphrasing. All right. Less stressful. Convenient, arguably one antonym would be stressful. Add the word less, which is a negative, less stressful, more convenient. Okay, all right. So use that as well. Okay, so again, students, uh, especially when you have access to the premium packages and those interactive courses, really do make sure to go through step by step. Okay, because you'll learn all of these strategies and these will come to your mind as you're going along. Okay, all right, um, good. So let's, uh, let's explain this. What do you mean? So here the reader is saying, Adrian, and that's that dialogue, right? Adrian, uh, what do you mean that uh, using public transit is a fraction of the cost? And what do you mean that it's uh, less stressful? Okay. So explain that, okay? All right, so uh, since I'm gonna do that, you do the same and then I'll check, okay? I'll come back and I'll check yours, right? So um, since public transport uh, 
is both publicly funded and has relatively lower operating cost per capita it commuters only need to pay for monthly passes as where with personal automobiles there is the high cost of gas insurance and maintenance okay in addition during rush hour trams and metros cross the city much faster than cars stuck in a traffic jam. Okay, so that would be my explanation there. All right. Um, stuck in a traffic jam resulting, and I can go back here, resulting in road rage. I believe that's yeah, road rage. New word for you there. which often results in road, road rage. A little bit clearer English. Okay, so uh, there we go. That's my explanation. Uh, let me uh, have a look at what you've put up there. Again, how am I doing this? I'm visualizing, right? So I'm picturing myself in Budapest or in Vancouver or in Osaka, a lot of the bigger cities where I've lived. And I'm picturing myself when I drive versus when I'm taking public transit. Beck John says, it is evident that the bus fee costs only a dollar, which is affordable by most, whereas private car fuels or prices are twice as high. In addition, during rush hour, mass transit can arrive at destinations on time as they have specific routes on the road while private cars get uh, stuck at traffic lights. Very good, Beck John. Nice explanation. Careful with your spelling and your words a little bit, but overall quite clear. Samuel says, traveling through mass transit, um, traveling by mass transit is convenient as there are scheduled and regular intervals and eliminates getting stuck in traffic. Furthermore, the cost of traveling this way is much cheaper. Samuel, you're definitely on the right track. Careful with your prepositions, okay? Uh, Mustafa says, on the other hand, public transport is more convenient for a lot of people, specifically students, where it is cheaper as well as there's no chance, uh, where, as well as there is a chance to sit and revise assignments while commuting. Yeah, Mustafa, that works. Uh, in comparison to private cars, where people do not have, where people have to give their full attention to the road. Uh, Mustafa, don't switch to you and your. Okay, careful with that. All right. Um, let's see. Cavid, due to public transport, uh, it can carry significantly more people than private vehicles, so the price per person is much cheaper. Also, commuters can read books and engage with different activities. Students, Stop writing the word you. <laughs> Does everybody understand when I say that? Don't write the word you. Uh, one really quick way to improve your band score for your speaking and your writing is stop using the word you. Please, everybody, tell me that's clear, okay? 
That's the fastest way I can help you to improve your band score is stop using the word you. Don't speak directly to the examiner. They could be from a completely different country, from the countryside, from uh, rural areas. You have no idea about that, so don't use the word you. Don't speak directly to your audience, okay? It's a big no-no for good communication, okay? You is no, all right? You is no, okay, got it? If you write you in a college or university essay, the professor will actually say, have you learned about correct essay voice? So, okay, don't use you, all right? It's a big no. All right, uh, especially in your academic exam, especially, but don't use you, okay? All right, um, so good. I'm happy that a lot of you are like, okay, got it, got it. Niyashiman says, you, 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 X, 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 yeah, okay. All right, um, so uh, now we need the example. All right, and again, the example, uh, I'm going to stay with personal, okay? So it's okay to use I, me, my, because I can talk about myself and what's happening in my life, okay? So I is okay, but not you, all right? You is called second person voice, and we only use that in instructional types of writing uh, for the most part, okay? So, and I'm not going to talk to you about that because you don't need that for the IELTS exam. All right. Um, so, the example here, again, is personal, all right? All right, so typing away here, this is my example, um, kind of connecting with the previous. Although I enjoy the luxury of my dad's Mercedes, I spend a lot of money on fuel. So, uh, in fact, so, in fact, I like taking... The, let's stay with one type of transport here, Metro more and saving my money to hang out with friends. Also, it takes me more than an hour to drive to my school during rush hour, but the Metro gets me there in just 10 minutes. So for me, public transport is definitely preferable. Okay. All right. So one way that I can create strong cohesion, coherence uh, between my paragraphs is by adapting the same example to emphasize my second point, okay? Uh, Beck John says, for instance, I take a public bus to my work, which takes about uh, only 15 minutes during rush hour, while the same distance uh, can be reached by 40 minutes in my dad's Mercedes. Very good, uh, Beck John. Fatime says, constantly, I have been using public uh, transport for going to school due to its convenience and affordability, not availability, Fatime, 
affordability. Admittedly, it is faster than my dad's car and I don't do not get stuck in traffic. Uh, Fatima, don't use contractions in your writing for the IELTS, okay? So I have been, it is faster. I will not get stuck, okay? Or I do not get stuck, all right? So don't use contractions, okay? All right, uh, very nice. Nicely done, students. So now comes the conclusion, and uh, I want to finish up this essay for you. So I'm going to write the conclusion here and just kind of jump ahead. Um, so the conclusion is simply uh, points restated. It's got three parts, okay? So points restated, argument strengthened, and uh, your take-home message. Okay, so it's got those three points. Uh, it's not just simply a repeat of your uh, introduction. So careful with that. It doesn't have to be very long. Uh, in the aisle, start with in conclusion. So in conclusion, both um, cars and public transit are liked by commuters. The uh, former for, for its flexibility and comfort. Comfort while the latter for its affordability and convenience. My preference is for mass transit. Um, as it suits my life needs. Nevertheless, or nonetheless, if we want to paraphrase, nonetheless, um, different people choose according to what suits their lifestyles the best. Okay, all right, so that's my conclusion with those three elements. Um, and uh, here it is, so in conclusion, both cars and public transit are liked by commuters, the former for its flexibility and comfort, while the latter for its affordability and convenience. Uh, my preference is for mass transit as it suits my life needs, nonetheless, Different people choose according to what suits their lifestyles the best. And that's it. That concludes the essay. That explains the preference of cars versus the preference of public transit. Okay. Samuel says, preferences change from person to person. Yeah, that would be another nice take-home message for sure. Okay. All right. So uh, that's the full essay. Let me read it for you. Just make sure uh, at home, always read your essays. Make sure it makes sense and everything is good. Okay. So from the top, uh, every person has their own favorite type of transport, whether it is trains, buses, the metro or private vehicles. Each and every person has a primary means of commuting around the city for their daily needs. Individual choice of transportation has significant impact on a person's life as well as the functioning of society. Although certain people prefer to use private vehicles to commute for greater comfort and flexibility, many others, including myself, opt to use mass transit as it is not only cheaper but also more convenient. 
Private cars provide operators with added privacy and space as well as use whenever and wherever the driver desires to go. Many people choose personal vehicles because they provide comfortable seats and air conditioning in their own space which cannot be achieved with mass transit. Furthermore, drivers can decide their exact departure time and arrival destination as where this is predetermined with public transit and commuters must go to designated stations, such as a bus or train station, at specified times. For instance, when I drive my dad's Mercedes to work, I'm spoiled by the comfy leather seats and the cool air conditioning, while the outside temperature is a boiling 40 degrees plus. Nevertheless, for daily purposes, I and many others prefer public transit. Using mass transit especially for daily commutes is only a fraction of the cost of operating a private vehicle and in many cases it is much less stressful since public transport is both publicly funded and has relatively lower operating costs per capita, commuters only need to pay for monthly passes as where with personal automobiles there's the high cost of gas insurance and maintenance in addition during rush hour trams and metros cross the city much faster than cars stuck in a traffic jam which often results in road rage. Although I enjoy the luxury of my dad's Mercedes, I spend a lot of money on fuel. So in fact, I like taking the metro more and saving my money to hang out with friends. Also, it takes me more than an hour to drive to my school during rush hour, but the metro gets me there in just 10 minutes. So for me, Public transport is definitely preferable. In conclusion, both cars and public transit are liked by commuters, the former for its flexibility and comfort, while the latter for its affordability and convenience. My preference is for mass transit as it suits my life needs. Nonetheless, different people choose according to what suits their lifestyles the best. All right. Okay. So there you go. That's the full essay. That's your band nine essay. That's going to be about 300 words, roughly 310, maybe even. Okay. Um, it's definitely over, uh, the 250 minimum because it's 250 minimum, right? Minimum. Uh, that's it for today. Uh, students, I will be back tomorrow for speaking part two and speaking part three with some new questions. And I will post this essay on our YouTube community board so you can check it out there um, for some review, maybe for some new vocabulary, grammar. You are very welcome, Rafa. Great writing, Bekjan. Good job, Abhishek. Nice contributions. Rashika, you are welcome. Rashika, I'd love to see some of your writing. Just get it out there. I'm Adrian signing out for now. Hopefully, I will see all of you tomorrow again. Bye for now. Have a great rest of your Friday.